I'm Simon Stanley, analyst at large at Heavy Reading, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Frank Chan, who is Director of Product Management at Siena. Now, 400G coherent pluggable modules based on 400ZR are set to make a significant impact on the cost and bandwidth of interconnects between data centers supporting the cloud services that are becoming part of everyday life for much of the world. Siena is a leading vendor in this rapidly developing market, and this is a great opportunity to hear about the challenges and opportunities ahead. So Frank, I'm just wondering which key technology innovations do you see have paved the way for pluggable coherent solutions? Yeah, so if you, if you look back at the current technology for the past couple of years, you can see that um, it, it follows a very familiar technology evolution path where innovations uh, over time will find their way from a performance optimized implementation to a more compact low power form factor. Uh, as you know, Sienna has a long history in coherent technology innovation. We've also followed a, a similar natural evolution by delivering coherent transceivers generation after generation with greater integration at a high performance and with better uh, economic benefits in terms of cost and power per bit. And essential to all of this is really our vertically integrated design and manufacturing capabilities. Um, and I think the importance of this vertical integration becomes even more pronounced um, in, in Korean pluggables. For, for Wave 45 Nano, which is uh, Sienna's Korean pluggable product line, We've leveraged this in-house capability, which includes silicon photonics, uh, design, and also advanced packaging expertise to deliver uh, a highly integrated transceiver on chip. And, and this device, the transceiver on chip, really serves as a foundation from which um, very competitive and power optimized pluggables uh, can be built. And, and these plugs can also support of course, a full range of 100 gig to 400 gig uh, line rates in order to support a wide range of application needs. Now, the industry is on the cusp of volume deployments of 400ZR in internet content provider networks. As a key player in this multi-vendor ecosystem, what can you tell us about the WaveLogic 5 Nano 400ZR? Yeah, sure. Um, 400ZR fulfills a very specific need for um, switch fabric extension over a single span. Um, many people refer to that as a DCI or data center interconnect use case. And, and the 400 CR really is set to be the first high volume consumption of 400 uh, gig Korean pluggable in, in a very compact QSO PDD form factor. Um, based on customer feedback to date, uh, Sienna's Wave 25 Nano 400 ZR QSO PDD pluggables uh, can really offer the industry's uh, lowest power consumption uh, pluggables. And, and delivering lowest power consumption is important because it can really ensure that all the ports in the router can be fully populated uh, for operation without really exceeding any um, the cooling capacity limits. And network operators, of course, in turn can benefit by getting the maximum capacity and highest port density out of the configuration. Um, and, and in addition, that power saving on a per plug level, if you have uh, multiply that at a, at a data center volume, it, it really adds up and it really translates into uh, significant um, sustainability and then cost benefits for our customers. Um, and in, the, in addition to the power consumption advantage, uh, I believe our ability to support component manufacturing and volumes is also another key capability that's that's underpinning um, the way 45 Nano 400 ZR offering. Okay, sounds great. Now. Pluggables have been around for a long time, but not so much in the coherent market. So, so what trends and operator requirements do you expect will drive broader adoption of coherent pluggables in the market? Yeah, um, it, it's a multi-million dollar question, isn't it? Um, and, and we see a number of market dynamics driving next generation metro and, and edge networks that could potentially lead to a, a broader adoption of coherent pluggables. And of course, in addition to the 400 ZR for the DCI use case, we see bandwidth upgrade in the access and network aggregation arena. And, and these upgrades will drive, uh, continue to drive volume for 100 gig and 200 gig plugs, a uh, coherent plugs, where, where these plugs can be deployed natively on switching and routing platforms, as well as on transport platforms. 
So that, that's one driver that we can see. Um, and then we're now with the transmission modes that are operating in the 60 gigabyte range, Coherent, Coherent Plus can now really support many metro scale type deployments. Um, and again, depending on operators' deployment preferences and their operational practice, these plugs can be deployed directly on routing platforms and they can also be deployed on transport platforms. Um, recognizing the importance of coherent plugs, we, of course, um, Sienna, uh, we are introducing um, transmission modes in the pluggable form factor that are even supporting high performance at a higher baud or single rate. And in, in order to further expand the application space by supporting network routes that are with a longer distances and, uh, and with high hop, hop counts. So, so hopefully that will also, again, further broaden the adoption of Korean plugs in, um, in the market. And, and, and one of the Sienna levers that the, the, uh, the network operators can, will be able to pull uh, really the wide range of platforms that we are um, adding into the portfolio that will feature the uh, Korean pluggable socket. And then that will basically um, take advantage of the uh, uh, Wave 45 and the Korean plugs that we are introducing to the portfolio. Okay. Um, now, based on your experience, how should network operators navigate the operational and deployment considerations for coherent pluggables, and how will your products support their needs? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, as as you would imagine, deployment uh, options, or many people refer to as consumer uh, consumption models, it, it vary it vary it varies pretty widely, and 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 there's no single a uh, right answer to that. But, but let's start with the question of where you put the plugs. A natural option, of course, is to put the current plugs directly on the switching and, and routing platform. And, and this is especially true when you're talking about QSFP DD form factors, because all the newer generation packet devices are all equipped with the QSFP DD sockets to support that. Um, this consumption model is often referred by the industry as uh, IP over DWDM architecture. Um, because the coherent plugs operate at a higher power envelope than gray optics and definitely extra care on things like thermal management and power consumption would need to be taken into consideration. Um, and also an open ecosystem also may take a little bit longer to, to realize. Um, another equally valid consumption model is to deploy these plugs on transport platforms, which are already engineered to support the thermal and power consumption that's needed for coherent transceivers. Um, so I think that in some way, a decoupling of coherent lifecycle from the routing platform lifecycle uh, may also fit well with many operators' current practice. Um, but that's all deployment where you put the, uh, the plugs. Another important aspect is the interworking with the underlying photonic line systems. Um, coherent plugs, regardless of where they reside, doesn't really take away the, I guess, the, the basic the fundamental economic benefits of the photonic layer and, and also the link engineering requirement that comes with it. Um, pluggables may have had an association with simple point-to-point -point systems in the past when we deal with um, non-coherent optics or gray optics, but, but when, when operators start to deploy these high-performance 400 gig modes um, in, in coherent plugs in the metro and regional networks, Link engineering and network planning really become as important as where you actually put the plugs in. So for us, the, the ability to, um, to be able to supply both the coherent pluggables as well as the photonic line system and combine with our deep understanding of, of network planning, I think really puts us in the pole position to, to assist network operators in terms of um, planning, deploying, and operationalizing the coherent pluggables in their networks, and then both in greenfield and in brownfield situations, I think. Okay, uh, that sounds great. And then finally, what do you believe the future holds for coherent pluggables? Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question too. Um, I think the market naturally will expect future coherent plugs to deliver higher bandwidth with high performance and at a lower cost and lower power per bit. I think that's just the nature of, of the business. Um, and we here at Sienna, of course, will continue to invest and innovate in all the key foundational technology building blocks to intercept that next generation of influx. Um, to support high bandwidth and high performance, I think it's safe to assume that 
um, we would going to need to have higher simple rates or higher bonds. Um, some industry activities are already working on a hundred gig proposal in a pluggable form factor of trading at 120 gig bonds and above, just to give you an example. And, and of course, to support these higher bonds, you need to have a higher bandwidth electro optics to go along with that. And, and then on top of that, in terms of the BSP ASIC, um, CMOS technology nodes beyond seven nanometer will also be required um, to deliver the size and power performance improvements that's needed um, for the future COVID pluggables. So I think uh, it's going to be exciting to see how, how things will unfold in the next couple of years across all of these technology plans. Okay, great. Well, thanks, Frank, and uh, thank you for listening.